Shasta says, can I run a profit and loss only for one particular checking account? So that's, a, that's, a, that's actually a really good, interesting question. So let me show you. So the short answer is no, uh, and I'll explain why so we understand exactly why that's the case. So when I run a, a, a profit and loss report, and I'm just going to start by running a standard profit and loss. I'll do a PL here. Okay. Um, all of the transactions or all of the um, uh, transactions that add up to this information are organizing the transactions based on the account category of each transaction. So the income and the expenses of each transaction. The only way to potentially run a profit and loss stemming only from one checking account per se would be if you had the ability to click customize and to click filter. And somewhere in here, there would be an option to select your source account, like your source bank account to filter, but you can't. You can, you can filter by distribution account, but that has nothing to do with your balance sheet account. It only has to do with your uh, profit and loss account. So the, the, the answer to your question is, can I run a profit and loss uh, for a particular check, uh, bank account? The answer is no. Now, if you do the work, if you do the work and enable tags, and tags are a really powerful thing. So for example, let me go into the, let me, let me go into the balance sheet and show you what I mean by that. And this might not be the answer you want, but it's an answer you can get to, okay? So I'm gonna go into tags and I'm gonna create a new tag group. So I'm gonna go to new and go to tag group. And then I'm gonna put um, account, something like that. And then I'm gonna click on save. And then I'm gonna create a tag called, right? Account one and account two. Okay, again, this is a workaround for the question, can I create a profit and loss by bank account? Which the answer is no. Period. Okay, you cannot do create a, uh, a profit and loss by bank account, but you can tag transactions based on account A one or account B. So let me show you. So I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go into the, the chart of accounts. It's easier here. I'm gonna go to the chart of accounts, and then I'm gonna create a new bank account. I'm gonna do this all from scratch, so I can, you can see the example. And this gives you, even though this is probably not as a as useful of of, of a report profit and loss by bank account, this could give you some insight in terms of how reports uh, work in, in QuickBooks. So I'm going to do account one. Okay. And then I'm going to create another account called account two. So let's do, it's going to be a bank account. And this will be account two. So just, again, I'm creating two different bank accounts, account one and account two to illustrate what we're doing. And then I'm going to go into each of these accounts. So let's go to account one. And then I'm going to have um, a transaction that's income and a transaction that's expense. So we can kind of see it. So let's say this transaction, we have $56,000 of income. And I'll pick um, an income account here. Let's do, we should have a sales account somewhere. Let's do there, channel sales. I click on sale, save. And then I'll do an expense transaction of sorts. So let's do office supplies and we'll do here 46,000. Okay. So in one bank account, I have 56 of income, 46 of expense. And then in, in another account, I have, let's say 89,500 in income. I'm going to choose the same, um, the same account. So it's channel sales, I think it was called. Okay, channel sales, just to keep consistency here. And let's say the expense on this one was office supplies. And let's say that's, um, I'm not sure that's the same account that I use, but that's okay. And let's do 74,000. Okay, so now when I run a profit and loss for the period of 418, Let's do 418.23, 418.23, and I click on run report. Okay, there's my two income items and my two expense items summarized in here. There's no way for me to put here at the top, hey, can you group these by checking account? Not an option, because that's not an option at all. Uh, however, if I click on each of these transactions, 
and I see the two separate transactions. And in each of these, tra these transactions, I, I make it a point to add a tag to that. Okay, so I go down into my tags. And where's my tag for it? I don't think I can do tags on deposits. Kind of, there it is. There's tags. And I'm going to make this account too. Right? So I'm actually, I'm doing the extra work of tagging them. And I go to the this one that says account one. And I put the tag here for account one. And then click on save and close. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and do the same thing with expenses. But pri prior to doing that, I'm just going to show you what happens. Up here in the top where it says display columns by, I can scroll down and select uh, the account tag and then click on run report. And then notice that now my sales by account per se are showing, but my expenses are not. So I also need to go back to those expenses and, and tag them. So as long as I go back to those expenses and tag them, so I go back to these two. Again, not the answer you were looking for, but um, I think it provides some insight in terms of how you can build some of these custom reports uh, using tags as well. So that's kind of a, a bonus concept there of, of tags. I wasn't planning to, to cover it, but um, I think that, that question that was asked was a really good question. It just opens up um, the opportunity for, to do a report like this. So now, Essentially, if I do go back and run a profit and loss and I select columns and I select account, this is the account tag. This is not based on the actual real source account. And I click on run. Now, essentially, I could muster some semblance of a profit and loss by account by using tags.